devoted solely to the theme of blessing and curses. They reveal the primary cause of each one of them. In verse 1 and 2, and I've told you all that to bring you to this. In verse 1 and 2, Moses deals with the cause of blessing. So, Pastor Paula, how do I cause? Because there's not a curse without cause, which means there's not blessing without cause too. So, in the bear ship, in the Genesis, how do I cause blessing to come? He says it right here. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, all these blessings will come upon you and do what? Overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So you don't have to look blessing down. Blessing comes on you and overtakes you. Here's what it literally translates. Here's the more literal translation of the first part. If you will listen, listening to the voice of the Lord your God, the repetition of the verb uh, gives added emphasis. Simply stated, the conditions of enjoying the blessings are two things. Number one, you have to listen to the Lord God. You can't listen if you don't have a relationship. It says, my sheep know how to hear my voice. When I'm in personal relationship, then I have an ability to hear. Hearing is more than listening because listeners hear what they want to hear. Hearers hear what they need to hear. And so when we listen, now here's the problem. It seems so simple. Well, this is just simple because if I hear, then number two, it says, if you diligently hear and obey, I don't only have to hear God, I have to do what God says. Now that seems so simple, but let me tell you why it's not. I'm just going to be real. We, our, our national average is, or our average is higher than the national, but 22% of this church tithes, which means 78% of people sit under the word of God and are taught, but choose to do it their own way. They choose to follow the rebellion. You're not rebelling against me. You're not rebelling against this church. You're rebelling against God. And so rebellion cannot be blessed. Well, I don't like that. Only two people said right or amen. It doesn't matter whether you like it or not. Because guess what? Two things. You have to forgive me. Yep. If you don't forgive me 70 times 7 a day, even when I say things you don't like, then you choose to do it your own way. Well, I just want to stay mad for a minute. Go ahead, stay mad. Go ahead, stay mad till you don't have a car to drive, till everything broke, busted, and disgusted in your life, and your whole life's on it. Stay mad. You get over it sooner or later. You'll get back in alignment when you're tired of living under a curse, when you're tired of everything not functioning and not working in your life, when you're tired of things going wrong. You, you'll forgive. Come on, you'll get back under. Well, I just, I don't want to hide nah, nah, that authority. Well, you're going to submit to authority too. Come on, I've already told you that. Your house will get in order. Let it keep going to hell in a handbasket. You, you, you'll work things out. You'll get that woman back in line and she'll submit and stop trying to wear the pants and control you and be all in order of everything. And you'll love your wife like Christ loved the church. You won't talk to her like a dog. You'll get things in order. Come on, because you will get so frustrated with the results that if you don't get them in order I'm helping somebody in this house you honor your mother and father if you want to live long you will so so it's listening and doing so you keep at you frustrate I'm going to leave the church I don't have a position well God told you to clean the bathrooms why aren't you cleaning the bathrooms God told you to go to Master Pastor. I don't want to go to Master Pastor. I went to seminary. God told you to go to Master Pastor. Okay, God told you to get in line. Should I keep going? You go, no, it's getting tight in here, so I will keep going. I will keep going. So every person in a position of delegated authority. If I ask Doug, Doug, I need my children's church to be fixed, but you decide to work on the choir, you're out of position. And because you're out of position, you have removed yourself from blessing. Now he gets this. So when I say, Doug, it's important for me for children's church, then as a person under authority, under the covering of this ministry, you're going to make sure that children's church. If I say, Dr. Payne, I need some diversity. I want things up here. You're going to get it in line. You're going to work it because this isn't about Dr. Payne being happy. It really isn't. That might be hard for some people to hear. Everybody's like, "Ah, I got my own agenda. I got my own thing. No, this is about fulfilling the plan and the purpose of God. So if I am the visionary, oh, thank you. Oh, I I lost. See, he's going to make sure I don't step on my glasses. Thank you, Pastor Michael. If this is about the vision that God has for this house, if this is about the vision for your house, wherever you have two visions, you have the vision. So you're not going to have fulfillment. This is good teaching for somebody.
Oh, we gonna get some curses off. No, I'm going so I just didn't feel like going to the marriage thing. Well, if it was important to your pastor, you should have been here. I'm just letting it soak for just a minute. Just a minute, okay? Because I, I really want your life blessed, and I'm going to show you some things. Because I'm, I'm going to teach you, and I'm going to show you. So if it, watch what it's saying here. Further in Deuteronomy 28:15, Moses states the primary curse, cause of all curses. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the cause of curses is exactly the opposite of the cause of blessings. Blessings come from here. Hearing and obeying God's word. God's word comes through his word. God's word comes through delegated authority. God sometimes will speak to you specifically, but it will always be in alignment with those things. Okay, then curses come the exact same way. They're a result of hearing God's voice or not hearing it and not obeying it. You just choose not to. So there's some people that the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourself together. It says, come to the house of God. Well, they just didn't feel like getting out in the rain today. They just didn't feel like it. So they just chose to pull the covers up over their head. But the Bible very clearly says there's something that happens corporately when we come together. Right? There's something. So this isn't, oh, I feel like doing this all the time. This is what I am called to do because his word declares it. This is good teaching right now. Slap somebody a high five and say, my pastor's helping you today. So the refusal to hear and not obey God's voice can be summed up in one word, rebellion. So why do some people love God and never get ahead in life? They simply choose not to be in a position of hearing and obeying. How do I reverse it? Now, remember, here it is. Sin means to miss the mark. Sin is to miss the mark. So when I have sinned, I have fallen short of the character of Christ. I missed the mark. Transgression, though, and he's wounded for our transgression, right? Transgression is the manifestation of missing that mark. So when I sin, I really have a confused and lost identity. I fall short of the character of Christ and miss the mark. But transgression is the manifestation of missing the mark. When transgression continues in a person's life, you go into iniquity. Iniquity is the practice of sin to the point that it becomes pleasurable. It is the practice that it's easier once you start missing church to miss it all the time. Once you stop tithing stuff, once you stop listening to delegate authority, it's the practice of it. Now watch what happens. I don't have to tell somebody, oh, that preacher or whatever. Your actions of rebellious that don't align up, your words can say, I love my church, but you, you don't tithe. I'm just using one thing as an example. Okay, you don't come to church regularly. Right. I know I'm talking to the wrong people. You, you don't serve God. You don't do you don't open your Bible. You don't crack those things open. And then you're telling your children to love God with all your heart, soul and mind. But they are going to carry forth iniquity because the manifestation of you missing the mark of not hearing and obeying is now producing them because you're forming them through your lifestyle. Oh, I, okay, I'm going to break it down. No, I was trying to be nice to you for a minute. You should have said praise the Lord because that's the easiest thing you could have ever done. Because now you're going to form some... Now, now, I was being nice. D, I was trying to be real nice and everybody's sitting there. But you just gave me two minutes to go off because you didn't say praise the Lord, hallelujah, anything. All right, you should have said amen, amen, because that's easy. Because now you're taking your child on a shopping trip and you're going home and they're hearing you lie when your husband says, would you get nothing, baby? And they know that you hung it in the trunk and you're going to lie about it. And now you produce a lion and they see you on the phone saying, to go tell them that mommy's not here and you're teaching them iniquity you're teaching them a deceptive nature now they know you got a girlfriend on the side and you got some numbers and you don't honor covenant and you don't honor your wife and you don't take care of her you're teaching please don't make me get it I was trying to be nice you're forming iniquity you're forming iniquity and you're wondering why our families are jacked up and our churches are jacked up and our lives are jacked up because we're forming iniquity. We're forming the manifestation 
are missing the mark. And you can come in here and say, I love God. Look at your checkbook because your kids are. Look at your behavior. Look at your habits. Look at your words. Look at how you talk about people. Look at your body language. Look how you treat your spouse. Look at how you talk to people. We need some course correction. We want some blessing on this house. I want blessing on your house. Woo. See, y'all should have just let me mess with your church stuff. You should just, I'm going to teach you. Just say, amen, Pastor Paul, amen. And then I won't get in all your other stuff. Look at somebody say, she's talking to the person right behind us. So iniquity is a predisposition to sin. It is a weakness to yield to a particular missing the mark. Pass from generation to generation. So die, how do I break it? Because if that's, how do I break it? Don't let me leave here without not breaking this, Pastor Paula. Remember that mostly is activated by words. So words become the main vehicle. I'm going to go to one scripture for you. Proverbs 11:9. The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. Okay, but through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. All right. What it's talking about is Loshan Hora, which is the curse of evil speaking. It means when you slander and gossip, I could get into a lot of teaching right here. But I'm going to tell you one thing. When I went through everything and the Lord told me, keep your mouth shut, because it's not my place to carry forth unrighteously and to speak against anyone. It's just not. Whether in a personal situation, I had personal feelings, okay? We all do. And in a personal, but as a public position outside of a sacred institution called family, I had no right to ever speak. I would have destroyed myself in the call of God, not because of what other people thought, but because of what I would have said. And the minute you speak outside, speaking against your parents, speaking against your pastor, speaking against your spouse, speaking against those, the minute you speak against another child of God, it is not your position to bring judgment on another person, especially if you're not in delegated authority and don't have discipleship with them. You bring a curse on yourself through slander and gossip because we forget that the abominations to God... Or those who bring division, those who have a lying tongue, those who speak, that is words that bring curses. It's vilification. It's when I defame another person. It's when I lower them from a state of importance and significance. When I come against what God says against them, especially when I don't have a position of authority, in authority I have the right legally by the word to bring correction. Outside of authority, I'm to pray for a person. Oh, good teaching, Pastor Paula. So what do I do? What happens if if I've done something stupid just ignorantly? Because we perish because of what? Lack of knowledge. We perish not just because we're, oh, I want to rebel against God. We perish because we're stupid. Look at somebody say, this is the last time the person behind you is going to stay stupid. Just tell them, say, this is the last time. And I'm through. So what do I do? Here it is. Three steps in escaping self-imposed curse. Number one, repent. Recognize you've made a negative confession about ourself or about someone else and repent of it. I changed my mind. I changed my direction. Number two, revoke it. Unsay or cancel it. Unsay or cancel it. Cancel the words that have not come in alignment, that have been spoken against you, and you've got to do it how often? Your confession is this day. Every day I speak over myself. Number three, you've got to replace it. Replace your previous wrong confession with the right one. You say, that seems radical. Really? Romans chapter 10, verse 10. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You can't even get saved without your mouth. You can't even have relationship with God without making covenant with your mouth. So if I want to break every curse, then I've got to, number one, repent. Number two, I've got to revoke it, right? And number three, I've got to replace it. Let's say it together. Repent, revoke it, and replace it. Say it again. Repent, revoke it, and replace it. One more time. Repent, revoke it, and replace it. One more time. Repent, revoke it.